I say I have anything interesting to say. All right. Oh, you mean the cross card? Cross card. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're back. It is reflection time. Um, you know, we're a Catholic group, so uh, religion is a part of the faith and a part of what we do out here. And uh, as soon as we kind of finish learning a little bit more and get a little bit more familiar with it, we start laughing. German philosopher who uh, wrote articles and showed up to Hitler in Nazi Germany in the 1930s and was forced to flee with his family. Um, two years ago, uh, the conference was on was on beauty, and I wrote a little article, and then this week was the conference again, the new conference. And so I reshared the article out as a, as a throwback to, to Becca. So um, I want to take a little quote from this article on beauty. So. Uh, Dietrich von Hildebrand goes on to say that beauty is the arch enemy of mediocrity, which is also true of the martial arts. The mediocre practitioner strikes with too much or too little power. His timing is off. There is little to no fluidity of his motions with the sword in his body. So now, obviously, we all begin at this point as a physical endeavor of, of martial arts. It requires practice. However, our goal should always be towards the unattainable perfection. As we work closer and closer to the goal, beauty is revealed. For the man who is satisfied with mediocrity, there is neither beauty nor success in his art. Without that fluidity, that beauty, the ability to execute self-defense movements are similarly limited. Okay. So there should be a beauty. If you're watching anybody who is good at martial arts and it's a that there should especially the classic martial arts right there will be beauty in their movement and motion it's not just raw power so why do i start that as a spiritual reflection so let's take a look at the next thing hebrews 4 12. indeed the word of god is living and effective sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating even between soul and spirit joints and marrow well, we practice a lot with separating joints and marrow out here. Not really, but not for anybody watching. Not really. You do it nice and gentle, nice and soft. <laughs> mm. It's okay to join. It will not hurt you. Um, but <laughs> much. I hear a much. This is gonna make a great video. We have a sense of humor out here too, so this is not all serious. We're a fun group. Yeah. We're a fun group. All right, but think about. Uh, word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So if it's comparing God's word to the two-edged sword. So the correct use of a double-edged sword is fluid. It moves from stance to stance, ready for the next strike. Um, you know, a single strike that stops short isn't fluid. It's not prepared for what comes next. The Bible is meant to be read and understood similarly. You are not supposed to take one sentence, like I just did, out of the Bible and try to reconstruct a whole thing out of it. You can, and it can be right, but you should be referencing other parts too. You, you should be looking at context. What happens in the paragraph before? What is Jesus saying or doing? Or what, is the, what are the apostles saying or doing? And what comes in the paragraph or two after? Right? What happens as a result of that, that sentence or that phrase that grabs you and says, pay attention to me? What is the whole context? It's fluidity, right? Because with the sword, I'm trying to show you, right? Uh, right, so if you, if you swing, right, you're prepared for that next strike. That next strike with the double-edged sword takes no even thought. You just step right back, right back where you came. Guaranteed. That is just as dangerous as the first strike. And it's the same thing with the Word of God. It is just as effective to see what comes before and after. It builds up. It makes a one-two punch, so to speak, or a three, four, five, six, seven, eight punch. Right? You're building that argument in the same way that you're building um, the 
building here in a sparring match. You're looking for fluidity, you're looking for continuity of thought, and continuity of direction. A lot of times here we practice uh, flourishing, which is just a old time word for shadow boxing. But what we're great on is fluidity. How do you move from stance to stance? How can you, how well does your brain work? How are you thinking ahead? Are you thinking to the next thing? Not that necessarily you're listening to somebody only with the idea of rebutting them. You're listening for understanding, but you're also looking for where do we go from here? How do I talk to somebody and tell them, especially in a, uh, when you're evangelizing somebody, right? How do I hear the person, understand what they want, what they're trying to get out of it, and then help provide that, right? That's that one, two, a nice fluid motion. There isn't, a, there isn't a stop and a start. And it's the, the same thing here in the physical realm where we're looking is how do I do that one too much? How, you know, I like to say that, that this is like playing chess at 60 miles an hour, right? How do, I, how do I make the next move while executing what I'm doing correctly and being where I need to be and being in the moment? Uh, although I will tell you that sword fighting is a good way to stay keep your brain in the moment. You are probably not thinking about what you're going to do for lunch while someone's swinging a big wooden stick at your head. Um, you are probably not thinking about whether I did my homework if you're a student, you know, while somebody is grappling with you on the ground and throwing you over their, over their hip. Um, it's the reality of the situation. It forces you to be in the moment. Um, but you should be in the moment a lot of the time. Um, Hildebrand's thing is, to, is, is a personal experience. It's relating to people as they are, not relating at them. Not just talking at them and them talking back at you, but trying to really grasp good understanding. Earlier in a video, you saw us doing these feeling drills, right? This feeling drill. That's a personal drill. That is relating to the person, understanding where they're coming from, where they're going to, in a physical sense, with the sword, with the martial arts. But you also can understand them from a logical point of view, from an emotional point of view, and that is more valid and more everyday use. You're not going to use this too often. Um, at least we hope that nobody's going to have to use this too often as a regular course of events. Um, but, but the relationship thing is an always thing. That's what we need to be taking the skills we learned here and applying it to, to those kinds of skills. All right. I'm going to kill the video here. And, uh,